Hey, what's happening, family? It's your man, Mark Black. We haven't done one of these in a while, and since it's such a nice day out, matter of fact, it's sunny as a motherfucker up here in Western Washington, I thought I would come out and take y'all on a walk with me and talk to you for a minute. First of all, I want to give a shout out to all my bros out there who is holding it down. All you family men, you fathers out there, man, I respect you. I esteem you. I love you, man. If you don't hear it from nobody, hear it from me. You's great. <laughs> Matter of fact, you're among the greatest, chief. And don't let nobody tell you different. I wanted to talk to y'all today about fatherhood. Share a little bit about my life as a father. As a, as all of you know, I'm a father and a stepfather, right? I know for all you red peel cats out there, y'all like stepfather, this nigga crazy, right? But hear me out. I got two bio kids and two steps. My two bio kids, my oldest, who is the oldest of all my children is 25. God damn, I'm getting old. <laughs> At any rate, my youngest, little bug man, He's 11. And uh, my two step boys, one's 23 and the other one is 20. And I gotta tell you, man, you know, fatherhood for me ain't been no crystal stare, bruh. My kid's mom, and I know y'all probably hear this all the time, but my kid's mom was hell, dude. Now, I'll admit, I wasn't the best cat to her. When I was young, y'all all know I went through a bunch of different things. And subsequently, I had some pretty bad attitude, a lot of anger problems. And I took it out on my kid's mom. I ain't proud of that shit. It's just, it's what it is, you know? And, um, and so, subsequently, I made some commitments after my daughter was born to stop being so, so evil, you know, just so ornery all the goddamn time stop hitting her and all but by that time the damage was done you dig and so things got bad between us she started attacking me physically you know and I wouldn't hit her back so guess what it was what it was anyway I was like this relationship dysfunctional as hell I know I played my part in it but I don't need to continue it so I tried to get out of it she got arrested for domestic violence against me, right? She called the cops on me after hitting me and fucking me up. She go to jail and all. So I filed for order of protection. You know, up here, that's what they call a restraining order. And so uh, we go to court. It's me over on that side of the courtroom, all on my lonesome. On her side, it's all our so-called friends, her peoples, her family. She's sitting there turning on the waterworks. When it was all said and done, she had custody of my kid because my little one wasn't born in yet. She had the apartment. I had 30 days to move. I had supervised visitation. Once every two weeks, court supervised. And uh, that's kind of the way it went. Didn't see my daughter from the time she was 15 months old to the time she was nine. They came and found me back in my old hometown. Shout out to KC, because that's where I went after everything went down. I lost my job, didn't have nothing up here. So I was like, fuck it, I'm going home. They came and saw me. And I wanted to be a father, man. When I was a kid, I wanted to have five kids. No bullshit. Because I had a fucked up ass upbringing. And I swore to myself that if I ever had kids, it wouldn't weigh no hell. I was going to put my kids through the same shit I went through. At any rate, I moved back up here to Washington State with them. Tried to make shit work with her mama. Tried to make a family. But dysfunction is dysfunction. It don't change, bros. So if you're in a bad spot, in a bad position... No do-overs, no go-backs. If it's broken, it's broken. Better to walk away from it and be done with it. At any rate, 2008, I finally ended it with her moms. But I stayed in my kid's life, though. I didn't leave here no more. You know what I'm saying? I stayed here in Western Washington where I remain. 
2008, she got pregnant with my boy, Trick B. It was a trick baby. She told me she was on birth control and shit. I know I should have handled my business, so it's no excuses. At any rate, I didn't want them. But I also didn't want to have my kids not even know who their daddy was. You know what I'm saying? So I just went on here and did what they said, manned up. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I gave my heart to the little man. I haven't seen him in almost two years now. She plays games with him constantly. Now, my stepboys, on the other hand, that's a different story. One of them I don't see because he's been a little asshole. But the other one lived with me. And we get along famous, me and him. Love the shit out of those boys. I love the shit out of all my kids, man. It don't matter what I've been through with their mamas. And I ain't been through nothing with my stepkids' mom. I'm still married to her. Love her ass dearly. But for all the shit I've been through, it ain't nothing. It ain't nothing like fatherhood. It's the toughest, ugliest, craziest, beautifulest, painfulest, stupidest, amazingest, dumbest shit a man could ever do. And more adjectives that I can't even think of right now. For you brothers out there who do day labor like I did to take care of your seeds, man, I see you. To all you brothers out there who's lucky enough to have some good opportunities, man, and you stepped up to the plate, even though your kid's mom ain't giving you nothing but hell, nothing but grief, I see you. And more importantly, bros, I respect you. You know, everybody want to give the black man short shrift, try to say we don't want to be fathers. We don't want to be involved in our kids' life. That we uh, dead beats. That we don't want to provide. That we don't want to do. I'm going to tell all of you punk motherfuckers something. I ain't never met one brother, not one, who's got even one seed who didn't want to be in that kid life. Not one. I know a lot of brothers that have anger towards their kid's mom and that shit bleeds over to the kid. And that ain't right either. Brothers need a lot of motherfucking therapy and a lot of help, man, to heal from the bullshit that we be going through. But I ain't never met no dude, even the hardest dude I know who got seeds. Who be like, man, fuck them kids. That's not to say them brothers ain't out there. But they sure in the fuck ain't the majority. Every single one of them I know tries in some way, shape, or fashion. A lot of them play prison games. A lot of them work dirty ass, dusty, painful ass jobs. A lot of them put up with bullshit from their kids' mom. Man, to see my bug, man, just to be able to get to see him. I had to have sex with his mom. I wasn't even with the bitch. And I had to go fuck her every so often just to be able to see my son. Some of y'all say, go to court. Can't afford that. Courts are expensive. <laughs> and a person who represents themselves in court truly has a fool for a client, you dig? But I'm going to tell you, even if your kid ain't with you, even if you ain't seen them in two, three, four, ten years, and you still paying. I pay child support faithfully every month. I'm unemployed and still pay child support every month. To all you brothers out there, man, who get told you ain't about shit because you ain't there, don't listen to them, man. Because I know what it's like to lay there at night and look up at the ceiling and cry wishing you had your kids next to you. Sometimes I'll be walking and I'll hear a sound that reminds me of my boy. When I sniff the air, I can still smell her. Still smell his sweat. Still smell his skin. He's in my heart. He's in my soul, man. There ain't no way you get rid of that just because you don't live with him or you ain't got... The money to kiss his mama ass to see him. That shit's still there. It's just that nobody gives a fuck. 
But I'm here to tell you bros that I do My experience ain't every brother's experience And thank goodness for that There's a lot of brothers out here man who, Who's lucky <laughs> In these days and times When a woman could just say I don't like that shirt you're wearing And file for divorce And take half your shit in these days and times when she can make false accusations, say that you raped her all throughout the relationship, bring up shit that happened 30 years ago and put it on you in the era of Me Too. There's still men out here that's, that's trying to continue the next generation. You brothers who are MIG towels, going your own way, if more brothers. I respect you, man. I understand that choice. Trust me, I've been red pill like a motherfucker for a minute. And even though I'm a married man, I make sure to let my wife know that she ever walk. Ain't no sweat off my brow. I'm going to be all right. Just remember this, man. When you cry, you ain't the only one. I cry with you, man. When you hurting. When you see a day like today and everybody walking around holding the hands of their seeds and you don't even know where yours at. I'm right there with you, man. I'm holding your hand. Oh, no, no homo shit, man. Just love. You feel me? Everybody make a big play about mama's day. It's going to break your heart to tell you, but I don't know no good mamas. Not even my own. I had to forgive my mother for a whole bunch of shit. It's a lot of rock solid cats out here. A lot of good ass dads, man. Who's just doing the best they can with what they got. Especially if you ADOS. This whole fucking society has been set up to try to make sure that your ass stay quiet and or dead. Take your pick. I'm telling you, bros. For those of you who are with your babies today, hug them. Hug them hard and hug them long. Kiss their face, man. Breathe in they smell. You know what I'm saying? Listen to them talk. Even if they talking about some fucking cartoon or a video game or, you know, they Barbie dolls or whatever. Listen to them anyway. Because you never know, bro, when it's your turn to not have them. For those brothers who ain't lucky enough to have their babies today, it's all right. It's all right. No things stay the same. Nothing, nothing ever stays the same. One day I expect that my son, because he know who I am, is going to tell his mom I want my daddy. Why? Because I was good to him. Because I took care of him. Because I loved him and he knew it. Your turn coming, bro. Maybe it's when your babies grow up. But that bond that you had with them when you was when you was there in the delivery room, that don't go away. That bond that you built through hours on the playground, running around with them, chasing them, tickling them, talking to them, that don't go away. Keep your head up, man. And you be proud today. Don't let nobody tell your ass that you a deadbeat, that you a no good, that you piece of shit. You be proud today. You helped in a real way to foster all of our immortality. I thank you, brother, for your efforts. Sorry, it may not have worked out so well for us. Oh, well, that's the way it goes sometimes. Right? But you keep your chin up. You keep your head up, man. And know this. Even if nobody ever tells you. Even if you're in a new environment, a new city, a new state, and nobody even know you got seeds, bruh. I see you. Your brother Mark Black sees you, man, and I respect you. And I love you. And thank you for what you've done for us and our people, man, and continuing the next generation. Humble as your contribution may have been, you contributed. It's your man Mark Black family Until the next time I wish you all love Peace Prosperity And power Real power To our people